All right, now we're going to learn how to explore a little bit and reverse engineer. Let's go to computer, C drive, UDK, whatever build you're using, engine, content, maps. Okay, now there's a lot of uh, content maps here. There are some examples also. They are located under UDK, UDK game, content, maps, UT3. So, wow, there's a lot of directories here, right? So just realize there are more even directories in this, and there's directories within directories and directories within those. It's no big deal. Um, what I would do is first, though, find this one. So UDK game, then maps under content, and then UT3, take these, right click them, copy them, and make a folder called backup, and paste them in there. All right, cool. So once you have a backup established, then you can launch the UDK. It will give you a warning message, ignore it. that one right there. Now you could store them somewhere else like on your desktop or whatever. I just don't want to destroy something you already have. Plus I want you to have the knowledge that you are not breaking anything right now and that way you fully explore things. You can rip it apart, you can figure out how it works. You know, game design and level design is not all about you know, reading a book and then understanding everything right off the bat. It's a lot of exploration. It's a lot of uh, reverse engineering. So file, open. And we're going to open one of these maps that we just created or just duplicated. So UDK, again, UDK game, then content, then maps, then UT3. Then we're going to open the Acropolis up. All right, so just the basics. One, you should really explore what I just taught you, navigation, before you even go on. Navigate around this world and feel how big it is. It's huge. That means you might want to turn on the camera movement speed a little higher so you can zoom around more. Also, explore the fact that there are these things that you can show and hide. They are located here. Show. Let's say I show with no volumes. Okay, let's turn volumes off. Volumes are these big, huge blocks around things. We'll go into volumes later, but for right now, let's turn them off. Okay, now you can see the raw engine itself. Remember to be able to like zoom in on something over here. You can right click on it and say go to actor and then fully explore it. Another thing is, realize how things are built. Um, that's going to be hard for you right now, because if you're new to this, you know, it might be, you know, you don't even know what you're looking at. But if you click on something, move it around. If I move this object out, you're going to find that that is like a static mesh. Okay? That's what it's called. If I right-click on said static mesh, I can go find in Content Browser, and then the content browser will pop up, allowing me to see that static mesh. And if I double click on it, I can go even further into it, explore it, so look at the wireframe on it. Okay. So to a new student, this is amazing stuff, really. Now, if you want to fully explore it, let's say go to level detail information, page down, Go to the different elements. Here, I have the ability to see uh, the material. 
And because my screen resolution is so low, it's kind of hard for me to show this, but right there. There is a find in content browser. So if you want to see the materials and the textures for the objects, there they are. And you can double click on them and look at them. All right, so just a little bit of eye candy here as far as moving around is concerned. Now we're going to be primarily looking at just tools, and then I'll show you how the tools work. But from time to time, what I would do is look back here at an example of what those tools really mean. So as far as static meshes are concerned, you can see that the world is primarily made of a whole bunch of these static meshes and they're all stacked on top of each other in different configurations. So as long as you know how to make static meshes, you can make levels. Or at least maybe learn where these static meshes are within the engine at first and build with those. We also must learn BSP. So if you show the world without static meshes, you'll understand BSP better and when to use it and when not to use it. So in this case, BSP is not to be used as an overall ability to make houses or anything like that. Sometimes I'm going to show you that you can do it, but it's not the preferred nature of things. In the preferred nature of things, BSP is this big overall platform stuff that you use to utilize texture space. But BSP is very expensive when it comes down to it. Uh, we realize that BSP has bigger texture spaces, no UVs, so the optimization isn't as, as there as it would be with a static mesh. So it takes a little bit longer for the engine to calculate for the BSP material corresponding to the static mesh texture material. So here, just um, yeah, hide stuff, look around, realize what's what, and then we'll go into what all these little things are as we go through the series. But now you have a reference point. Take probably about 30 minutes to look around and have fun with that. All right. Let's go on to the next video.